numerical programming is becoming one of the key skills for engineers in the 21st century. My name is Dr. Gabriel Weymouth at the University of Southampton. I've developed this set of Jupyter Notebooks and a set of videos to go through this to help introduce numerical Python uh, to engineers everywhere. Um, this is just a quick guide, uh, but the main idea is that it will help anyone who's interested in adding programming to their repertoire, especially engineering students who didn't get very much programming in their background, uh, but now are looking to apply for programming type jobs. So that's the main goal. Uh, there's two ways you can go through and run these notebooks and follow along with these videos. First, you need to go to the GitHub site. So this is GitHub Weymouth Numerical Python. I'll put a link in the description below. Once you're here, you, the easiest way to do it is just to click on one of these links. And we've got the setup to point at Google Colab. So as long as you have a Google account, then clicking on that link should take you to the notebook. No must, no fuss, no need to install anything, which is pretty great. The other way to do that is to run the notebooks locally on your machine. That has some advantages if you want to save things or make setting adjustments and things like that. Um, so the way you do that is you go up to this code button and then you decide how you want to download the entire set of files at once. Um, I recommend GitHub Desktop. It's a pretty nice uh, tool, especially for Windows users, uh, but you can just download the zip file if you prefer to do that. Of course, if you're going to run things locally, then you need to have Python and the Jupyter Notebook programming environment installed on your computer. And I recommend Anaconda. It's a package manager that grabs everything together in one bundle and will get you set up to run. So this is an example of the Anaconda Navigator. After downloading and installing it, you can just launch a Jupyter Notebook. Then you navigate to the folder. So in my GitHub folder, numerical Python, and here's all the files that we got from GitHub. So open up the first one, Python basics. And again, we can see we're live. So I can run the code and it works. So that's how you get started. And if you just wanna get started, then go ahead. If you need a little more convincing, uh, then I've got a few more words to say about why this sort of thing would be useful. Um, so first of all, why should we learn programming to do any kind of analysis? Pretty much the only alternative to, for doing analysis is something like a spreadsheet tool. Um, and that's a big mistake. So spreadsheet tools are great for doing simple tasks like balancing a budget, but they're really not meant to do things like advanced data analysis. And there've been lots of examples in business, economic policy and healthcare where things go wrong when you try to extend a spreadsheet past what it can do. Uh, the main problems are that spreadsheets hide their methodology behind the data. You can see the data and that's comforting, but you don't know how that data got there. And that means, number one, it's really hard to find errors. Errors are very tricky to hunt down in these things, especially when you start switching out the data. You can have one sheet linking to another sheet. You can pull in a new set of files and everything gets corrupted. It's a nightmare. Um, so it's really not the appropriate tool. In contrast, if you do programming, then the program is the methodology. Nothing's hidden. Uh, that can be a little harder to get used to if you're used to looking at the numbers, but once you write that methodology down, you can pull in any set of data or generate data there in there, make the figure, and you can test it much easier and you're going to have much less trouble with reproducing other people's results or applying the same method to new data. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that spreadsheets are really not extensible. They have a limited set of capabilities, whereas a real programming language like Python has tons of libraries. If you want to be able to do something else, you can pull in that capability and start playing with it. Uh, so that's a huge advantage. Of course, Python's not the only program for numerical programming. Uh, indeed, there are many excellent alternatives. Python does have some big advantages, which is why we teach it at Southampton. Number one, it's in high demand. Uh, so it's a really good way 
to get a job is to have uh, this additional skill set in your toolbox so that when people ask, are you able to do some data analysis, you can say, yes, I've got Python background. I worked on Python projects. Um, so that's really good, especially for things related to data science and machine learning, which are, of course, growing fields. Um, Python is huge. It's got an enormous user community. So this plot is automatically updated from Stack Overflow all the time. And you can see that it's just been going up and up and up and up. So the number of people in Python is you know, at least five times higher than any other kind of numerical programming language. And that comes with a couple of big benefits. Number one, as you can see from Stack Overflow, it's much easier to get help. So if you have some problems, you can find somebody who knows what to do to help you out. The other thing is that all these people are developing code, they're sharing it, and they're testing it. So you can be pretty sure that what you're using is kind of safe uh, and, and free. So that's the second part is that you have uh, Python being open source and free to use. That's a really big advantage. So teaching students MATLAB is kind of common in engineering, but I think that's a bit of a mistake. Uh, because after they graduate, what if that student goes to work for a small company that can't afford a MATLAB license? Or what if they want to start their own company and they don't want the overhead? Um, so sticking with open source there is really great. It keeps you up to date, it keeps the community huge, and it lets you be flexible. Let's grab this new tool, we don't have to spend anything for it. And finally, and maybe most important, is that Python is easy to learn. It's a very readable language, it kind of makes sense as a spoken language almost, the pseudocode kind of becomes the Python, uh, which is great, especially once you're familiar with it. The other thing is that once you've learned a real programming language like Python, then you can extend it to other ones. So kind of that background familiarity forms a good basis for learning other numerical languages like maybe R, which also has a, a nice strong background, okay? So those are the reasons that I think you should be using this so the last thing is that this particular notebook is pretty fast. Like I said, it's kind of a crash course. So we don't assume a lot of background knowledge, as little as we can, but we accelerate very quickly up through pretty advanced engineering examples. Um, and the reason for that is to get you going as quickly as possible. But if you need something else, starting at an even more basic level or something that goes at a slower pace, there are lots of other resources available online. And I encourage you to go through this list or many others uh, to get some other help. But hopefully, if you are trying to kind of get up to speed quickly, this will be helpful too. Okay.